Houghton. I'm Lynn. And today we're going to be reviewing and showing you how to play Goblau, the De Goblinade. I believe that's how you pronounce it. This game is from a French company. So I feel like everything should be kind of like French pronunciations. Uh, this is a little take that card game, sort of. Uh, very lighthearted. Um, it has an artwork style with a feel like very much like the old Munchkin games. So the author of the game is listed as being Arthur Vigneault, Vigneault I Maybe. believe. Vin but then, but then it says design is by uh, oh, Design looks like Laurent Defans and then illustrator Christoph Suchecki. So I'm not sure. So in the, in the book, we look to see, you know, because it says Arthur's name on the front and then it says Laurent's name under design. Uh, it doesn't really clarify it in the book. I'm guessing they both had something to do with the creation of the game. Well, their names are all in the box. So, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, it, this is a uh, game by Exod. I think games. Exod Games. I think that's how you pronounce it. Exod. Uh, so this is listed as a two to five player game with 20, for 20 to 30 minutes, ages eight years and up. So we're going to start there. Uh, now the... Two to five players, it's accurate, but this game is much better with three or more. I don't think it plays very well at two. What's your opinion on that? Um, It's a little bit boring with just two players. It's too back and forth, yeah. It, it's definitely better with more. I, I really like it at, at, at a larger player count. Um, the 20 to 30 minutes is probably a pretty good estimate, though. This game is fast mm -hmm. it is a really really quick game and i like that they gave a range especially because the more players you have um the longer the game's going to be so giving it a range like that makes it more likely to be accurate mm -hmm. uh eight years and up this is not a very complicated game i think i agree with this yeah. what, uh what do you think yeah i think that's good all right so again this is a generic fantasy themed game where goblins are fighting out who gets to be the new goblin king basically you're each uh tribal goblin lords and you're going to fight with the other goblin lords to try to be the new goblin king um so i'm going to open it up and we're going to show what comes in the box so the first thing you got here is the rule book now the rule book it's got like first it's got this like little comic book in the front to kind of give you the theme of the game um the so the rule book's not terrible uh, it's got one big ambiguity. It's, it, I shouldn't say it's not terrible. It's not bad. It's got one big ambiguity in here where there's a, a rule in the rule book that co is contradicted by one of the cheat sheet rules. I wanted to draw specific attention to this. So in the rule book, it specifically says, and this may not make sense until we're showing you how to play the game, but it specifically says that when you're doing a defense step, of, uh, you're not allowed to sacrifice a tooth to set the die to a specific side, while on the cheat sheet it says you are. Uh, other than that, I didn't really have too many ambiguities, but this one big one kind of stuck in my craw a little bit. So we just kind of had to pick which one we liked better to go with, and we went with the one on the cheat sheet, mm -hmm. uh, because we liked being able to sacrifice the tooth at all times, versus just when you're attacking, which is what the rule book implies. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, the next thing we have here is we've got some custom dice. Everybody gets one of these really cool custom dice. Uh, they the, the weapons are less important than the colors behind them because the colors, uh, when you roll these, will tell you what color cards you're allowed to play on that turn. You have, these are goblin's teeth. They are the same kind of generic gem uh, forms that you see in a lot of games, except they did them white to be goblin's teeth, which makes them really funny and characterful. I love these. Uh, I just get a kick out of the fact that they decided to do them white and, and call them teeth. Forgetting to put some dice in. Oh, that's fair. But then the last bit of components are the cards. So the artwork on the cards is really nice. I like the whole um, very quirky little funny goblins. They're, they remind me a lot of... of artwork from other funny games like munchkin and whatnot um they're they're really kind of cool big fan of the artwork style the cards feel fairly substantial they are one of those like um they're kind of like a matte finish mm -hmm. so not i mean they're not they're not a linen finish but they're nice they're nice and they uh, i do really really like the artwork style of them 
And that's really it that comes in, in the box. So we're going to take you over to the table. And we're going to show you how to play, run you through a few turns. And then we're going to come back. And we're going to talk about this game, Plays and Feels. And we're going to rate it and review it. Okay, so here we're set up to, for a three-player version of Gablau. Now you shuffle up the deck and you deal out five cards to each player. I have the I have five cards here as this player. I am also controlling this player over here who has a hand of five cards. And Lynn is over there with also a hand of five cards. We each get one die and we each get ten of the teeth which are to represent your life points. The teeth are these... Uh, kind of gems that you see in all sorts of different sets, except they're white, so they look like teeth, which is pretty fun. Uh, there are cheat sheets and plenty to go around, so you get your cheat sheet. There's enough for every player, which is very good. And then once you all have your 10 teeth, your hand of five cards, and your cheat sheet and your die, everybody rolls the die once for their starting roll. And then we are good to go. And then at that point, we randomly decide who will go first first. So we're going to start with this player over here on this side of the table going first. And at the beginning of their turn, they decided they want to discard any cards and then they draw back up to a full five card hand. There is not a max hand size, but if you have more than five cards, you're not going to be able to draw any. So they decide they don't want to draw any. They're just going to have a quick look at their cards and decide what they want to do. And then they're going to decide, do they want to keep the die on the side it's on or they do they want to re-roll it? Uh, so what they're going to do is they're going to keep it on the side it's on, which the side it's on is the white and blue side. Now what this means is they're allowed to play any and all cards from their hand that are blue and one card that is white. White cards are different from other cards. They can only be played one per turn. Blue are defensive cards, so they'll be able to get up some defense, which is nice. And then in addition... Uh, lightning cards can be played no matter what side you roll because there is no side that shows the brown lightning cards. So what they're going to do is they're going to play one blue card. It's going to be a cannon fodder. This is a defensive card that can be used later to block incoming enemies. They're also going to play one white card because one of the ways you win is by collecting five white cards in front of you. They're playing the philosopher who has no ability. White cards often do have abilities, but this one is just to help you towards winning and that's all they're going to play except they're going to you know what they've decided they're going to play pickpocket which is one of the lightning cards and they're going to steal two random cards from my hand so i'm like oh well i'm gonna give it a quick shuffle and they're just going to grab two boom and put them in their hand and then they're going to take a quick look and hope they got more blue cards they did not though they did not manage to steal any more blue cards so now they are done with playing cards and they have nothing to attack with because they need red or purple cards to attack so th what they're going to do is they're going to say done and it will be lynn's turn so lynn are you going to keep that die or are you going to roll it i'm going to keep it okay and i'm going to play two warriors so now lynn has the red and the white face which means she can play one white card and as many red cards as she wants and the warriors are red cards the other way to win, of course, is to attack with red or purple cards and cause all of your opponents to run out of teeth. Every time you do a damage to someone, they lose a tooth. Um, so I'm going to attack you. going to attack me? Oh, boy. Well, I'm going to keep the die on the face it's on with the blue side and the purple side there because the blue side allows me to play defen uh, defensive cards. I'm not going to reroll it. And I'm going to play a Super Goblin, who is red and blue, because he can be used to attack or defend. So I also get to draw a card when I'm attacked. I forgot to do that. So I'm going to grab an, a card, and I'm going to put it in my hand. And I'm going to play out the Super Goblin, and I'm going to use him to block one of the warriors. They kill each other. They both get discarded. The other one comes through and hits me, and I lose a tooth, which I'm going to put over here in next to the deck as it is gone. Are you doing anything else, or are you done? That's it. Okay. So... I'm going to look at my hand, and I've decided I'm going to not discard anything. I'm just going to draw up two more cards, so I have a full five cards in my hand. And looking out there, I decide I want to re-roll the die. I don't want to keep it on purple and blue. I'm looking for something else. So I'm going to roll it. I got a red and purple. I'm going to take that. Now, if I did not want to take that... 
I could lose one tooth, and therefore one life, to set this die to any side I wanted. But actually, the red and purple is good for me right now, so I'm going to take it, I'm going to keep it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a warrior, who's red, and he's allowed to attack and do one damage, and I'm going to uh, drop a brute, who is purple, who if he attacks and goes unblocked, will do two damage. So I'm going to drop them out, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a pickpocket uh, I got one of those too, and I'm going to play this one on Lynn to steal two of her cards. So I'm going to take these two. Okay, not ones I could, I could use, unfortunately, but that's okay. And then I'm going to attack Lynn back now with my Brute and my Warrior. So Lynn, or, Lynn gets to draw a card, and then she's all, again allowed to re-roll her die to try to get oh, some I... blue facings if she has them for defense. I... I'm going to play Super Goblin. Oh, you already have the red side, so you could do that, yes. So you're going to block my Brute, I'm guessing? Yes. Now, even though the Brute does two damage when he gets through, it doesn't matter. He can still be blocked by a single uh, uh, Cannon Fodder or Super Goblin. And again, they will kill each other. My other one that gets through will do one damage to Lin, at which point he comes back to me, and I am done. And it is now going to be the third player's turn over here. So they are down to four cards. They're not going to discard any. They're going to draw one. They're going to re-roll their die. They don't want it on the blue and white. And they got it on red. It's pretty good, but they want to change it. So they're going to sacrifice a life, like I said before, and they're going to change it to the red and white. And at this point, they're going to drop their entire hand. They're going to throw out the Trickster, which is a white card that has the ability that he allows you to roll the die one extra time so you can get an extra reroll. And they're also going to drop out three warriors and a super goblin. Big attacks. And they're going to look back and forth. And you know what? They want to come at me. So they're going to attack me with these four guys. So I get a free draw. I'm going to draw. Then I can roll my die and I'm hoping for a blue so I can get some defense out. I didn't get it. Now, um, as it says on my cheat sheet card, it says, and we go by this rule, it says we can sacrifice one health point to set it even on the defense. I'm going to set it to blue, and I'm going to drop two cannon fodder out to defend and defend myself. And I'm going to defend against two of those, uh, one the super goblin and two one of the warriors. All four of them will be destroyed. The other two are going to get through, and they're going to do two damage to me, at which point that player is done, and it is Lin's turn. Okay. Did you discard any, or did you just no, draw No, I only had one card. Oh, wow, you were short, huh? I'm going to roll my die. Oh, okay, what you, what you hoping for, I'm curious. A red. No, you got... not that. Are you going to spend a tooth or no? I'm going to play Undice to roll any die again. Oh, okay. So you get a free re-roll. Go ahead. It's still not. It's still a red. I'm going to spend a tooth because so, I want... Purple and red. Yes. Okay. I'm going to play a Warrior and a Brute. Ooh, that's a lot of stuff. And I'm going to attack you. Okay. Well, I get to draw my free card. Then I get to decide if I want to roll or not. I'm not. I'm going to leave it there because it's got blue there. And I'm going to throw out this Super Goblin, who is, again, both blue or red. So I can throw him out on that. But I'm not going to actually get to have to defend. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Reflector Shield. And instead of attacking me, you're going to attack the third player now. So they get to draw a card, which they were out of cards. Um, they've got nothing that they can play. And they've only got one Cannon Fodder. They're going to defend the Brute. So them and the Brute die. But they're going to take two damage from the other goblins. And that's how you play a game of Goblau. So you go back and forth, you attack whichever player you think is in the lead is doing the best. Um, if a player ever runs out of teeth, they're out of the game. There is player elimination, but usually that doesn't happen until everybody's pretty close to being out of the game anyway. And in, in case uh, that doesn't happen, where all but one player is knocked out of the game by running out of teeth, if a player manages to collect five of the white cards, which this player was going for, they actually had a third white card already in their hand, and if they had drawn up the next four, let's see what they would have gotten. Uh, nothing else yet, but they definitely would have tried to get this third one out. If you get five white cards out, you instantly win the game of Gavlau. So now we're going to head back to the table. And we're going to talk about how this game plays and how it feels. And we're going to rate it and review it. 
Okay, welcome back. So that was how you play a game of Gablau, the De Goblinade. Which, Gablu? Gablu? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Feel free to comment down below if you know how to pronounce this word. I'm guessing it's a play on words on something in French. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a pun, and yeah. we just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it's probably something that doesn't translate into English. De Goblinade, I, I kind of get it. I don't get it. Maybe? I don't uh, Yeah, I think it might be something that doesn't translate very well. Okay, so this is just a silly little... Um, but fun, uh, take that card game, really, when it comes down to it. I like I like uh, the die element, which is really different. You don't see that in a lot of other games. The whole thing of you're trying to get the right faces to play the right cards that you want to mm -hmm. get out. And if you don't, you're allowed to sacrifice basically a health point mm -hmm. to get the right faces automatically. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of neat. I also, I like the whole thing that when you get attacked, you're allowed to draw a card. Which can really help you if you spent most of your hand. And then I also, I like some of the card effects. Like, I love that one that lets you, we showed it actually in the gameplay portion when you can deflect an attack from one mm -hmm. person to another. There's a lot <clears throat> of cards like that and they're <clears throat> they're really fun. Um, again, it is it is a take that card game, but it's got two different ways to win. Because you can win by eliminating the other players, which... I do get a little worried with player elimination, but we've never uh, yet had an occasion where anyone was eliminated and was sitting around for any prolonged period of time. This is such a fast game that generally it's it's a matter of a few minutes till the game ends from the time the first person gets eliminated. And also we've had games where no one was eliminated and you just won mm -hmm. because someone got five of the white cards. Actually, that's kind of been the more common way for people to win mm -hmm. if you have three or more players. At two players, it's so much quicker that usually you you win, and you're also your your attacks are all focused mm -hmm. on one other person. In two players, you win by knocking the other player out. But then, of course, there's no real player elimination because it's only the two of you. Mm -hmm. So, what are your thoughts on on some of this? Um, I think it's fine. Um, I would prefer if you got to roll your die more than once. There are cards that give you the effect. From yeah. There, there's a card that lets you re-roll any die, including an opponent's. And then there's also that one card that just gives you one extra re-roll every turn. Uh, it's one of the white cards. But yeah, I agree. There should be a little more press your luck on the rolling. But that being said, I also like the fact that you have the option not to re-roll it. Mm -hmm. So if you rolled it and you drew cards that really fit the colors you have, you can be like, ah, forget it. It stays. You're not forced to roll it. And mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. But I also like that instead of pressing your luck, there's that whole thing where you can literally pay a life to not re-roll it, but set it to what you want. Mm -hmm. So you can be guaranteed to get what you want. It's just going to cost you a point of, point of health, basically, to do it. And what are your your opinions on that? Because those, those, in my opinion, are some of the things, the, the things in this that set it apart from, say, other basic take-that-card games. Yeah, I do like that you can use a, a life point to set it to whatever one if it just doesn't roll your way. Yeah. But I also I also feel like one roll is not enough to just be like, oh, I gotta use a, a health point, you know? Like you should get a few a few rolls yeah. and then health point. Now, yeah, yeah, that's fair. And I mean you could house rule it. You could do mm -hmm. a little press your luck house rule thing. Um that being said, uh I mean this this game is very light. It's very simple. You could totally I mean this is the sort of game you could definitely house rule up because it's it's so quick and easy to teach. So quick and easy to play. I would say this is a decent filler game or icebreaker game. Um, definitely good to teach kids to play games. It, it's uh, There is some attacking other people. So you do have to be of the right mentality where that attacking is not going to... You're not going to take direct offense. That's mm -hmm. just how the game plays. You have to keep... This, this is, needs to be done lightheartedly. Mm -hmm. You need to play this game lightheartedly and just take everything in stride and, be, and laugh with it. And if you get knocked out, laugh with it and be like, I'm back in the next game. You know, because you can play a few of these back to back and it's fun. I mean, it's silly. It's silly. It's lighthearted. It's got this comical art style, which which I quite like. Here's a bunch of goblins on the cover sitting around gambling, which actually has nothing to do with the regular game. Yeah. But but it's a fun illustration. And that's how the goblins look in the game, which I do like the artwork style a lot. There's some really cool cards. Like you're a big fan of when the dragon pops up, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a card that actually wipes the board clean of all uh all goblin soldiers, brutes, super goblins, basically all of them get wiped out mm -hmm. in one fell swoop. And cannon fodder too, I think. Anything that's not a white card. Yeah, bas yeah basically anything but the but the white cards. So, uh, okay. Do we have anything else to say on this one? I don't. Do we didn't, we didn't talk about any negatives. Um, 
my my only my only negative is that it's, it is quite light. It is quite a light game. I might have liked. I do like some of the things they put in here that differentiate it from other uh, very light take that card games. It maybe could have used one or two other things, like you said, maybe a press your luck portion, something like that might have been nice. But that's really it. And I mean, it's the negative, but it's also the nature of the beast. That's what they were going for. They were going mm -hmm. for a super light game that's accessible to just about anybody. So, do you want to rate it first or shall I? You can go first. All right. Well, I'm going to give Goblau the. The Goblin Og. <laughs> it's got a fun name. I don't know what it means, but it's a fun name. It's definitely got to be a play in words. I'm mm -hmm. going to give it 7 out of 10 stars. This is a good game. I enjoy it. Uh, it's not something you're going to want to take super seriously. This is not a game that you're going to like have tournaments of, unless you have a lot of people that like to get really funny with light-hearted games. But this is a game you could play over a few beers while eating some pretzels. Definitely a beer and pretzels game. Uh, very light, very hearted, very quick, good icebreaker game, good game to introduce people new to gaming to gaming because of how quick and light it is, and then you could immediately move on to something else. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to give it 7 out of 10 stars. Okay. What about you? I'm going to give it 6. Okay, so still positive, but a little lower, a little closer to well, mediocre. Well, it's just like, I I think it the game is, is fine. Mm -hmm. I just... Like, I'm just basing it on my enjoyment of playing it. Okay. And, like, I wouldn't want to play it all the time. Mm -hmm. I would really need to be in, be, the mood. be in a particular mood to play it. Okay. But you did like it. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, this is still positive. It's still two thumbs up from us. Lynn is, I like it, but I need to be in the mood to play it. Does that sum that up pretty good? Yeah. And I was like, I like it. I play it just about any time, especially. I think this is a really good... Uh, intro level game like i said good, good i mean i don't think i would pull this out if a bunch of hardcore gamers came over but like if people were drinking and looking for light-hearted games to play this is a game that i would definitely go to and i would pull out especially if people who are not as familiar with more advanced modern games it would definitely be a good game to pay, pull out also i do recommend this as a family way game you're going to play it with your kids this is a good game to play with your kids so there you have it that is our review for Goblau, the the Goblin Odd. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, either on this video or on the game of Goblau, the De Goblin Odd, feel free to put them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this review and tutorial and you'd like to see us do more like it of games like this, feel free to give this video a like, share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the board game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game, game on. on.